Hello, boys and girls, teachers and parents. It's me, Mr. Bradley, and today we're going to be learning about simple circuits. But before we begin, please pause the video and do the starter question that I'm about to show you chicka, 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 right now. Circuits. The word circuit means a rough loop or circle. Maybe you know a member of your family who does circuit training as a form of exercise. This means that they will do a different exercise in a loop until they're back where they started. Another example could be doing a loop on a running track or racing a car on a racetrack. So long as you start and finish in the same place, then you've got yourself a circuit. An electric circuit is pretty much the same thing except this time it involves electricity. In an electric circuit, we use metal wires to make a loop or a circle. And instead of runners running along the loop, we have electrons. But there are certain rules for this to work. Oh man, I hate rules. Quiet you. Number one, we need something to power this electric circuit and move those ugh, lazy electrons all the way around the circuit. We need something like a battery. Number two, there cannot be any gaps or breaks in the circuit. What? No breaks either? Who even are you? What child has a fully grown beard? That's, that's, that's just weird. If there are, it means that the electrons cannot travel along the wires. Just like a race car driver cannot drive across the tracks if there are big holes and big gaps. Number three, Yes, I've done it. I've done it! The circuit needs to be made using conductors, such as metal. This wire may look like it's plastic, but actually on the inside is metal. Okay, now that we know the rules, let's build a circuit. First thing I need is a metal wire, and the second thing I need is a battery. In three, two, one, ta-da! Oh. Well, that's a little bit boring. Although we can't see anything happening, electrons are actually traveling from the negative side of the battery through the wires back to the positive side. I think to prove this, I'm going to have to turn up the juice a little. Okay, so instead of making a boring circuit using a normal battery, I'm gonna use my car's battery because the voltage and power is way higher. To do this, I'm gonna use these wires that look like giant crocodile clips. Because my car's battery has a much higher voltage than a regular battery, I should be able to use it to make sparks. Although it looks much different from a regular battery, I'm still connecting one wire to the positive and one wire to the negative. And as soon as I connect these wires together, electrons will flow from the negative side of the battery into the positive side. What also happens is the wires heat up a lot. I can prove this by connecting them to the lead of a pencil. It heats up and begins to cause smoke. Okay, I think it's time to learn a little bit about batteries. Okay, so I've done my best to create my own diagram or model of the battery. As you can see, there is a positive and negative side to the battery, which is divided by this insulating layer. Remember that the battery and the wires are made from atoms, just like everything. And atoms are made from protons, neutrons, and most importantly, electrons. That means that these negative electrons that are in the negative part of the battery are attracted to the positive side of the battery. But unfortunately, they can't get through the insulating layer. So what do the electrons do? Well, to be honest, most of the time, they don't do anything. They're stuck inside the battery. The only time that they can move is when we connect wires to the battery. When a wire is connected from the negative part of the battery all the way to the positive side of the battery, this means that the electrons can take the long road home to the positive side of the battery. And it's time for a recap. To create a circuit, we need a battery, wires, and light bulb. Wires are made from metal, which is a good conductor of electricity. 
electrons travel from the negative side of the battery along wires to the positive side of the battery. A circuit is not complete unless you have a battery that has a wire connected to its positive and negative side. May I also add that these wires need to be connected in a loop with no gaps or breaks at all. And so we have reached the end of our video. Remember to stay tuned for part two where we learn about the light bulb and how to add that to our circuits. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more cool and wacky videos. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.